uh, we have asked for additional air monitoring to look for other contaminants, things that we wouldn't normally look for in those fixed air monitoring. And we have two mobile labs. Uh, one is making its way here. I believe the other one is making its way, it, it may already be here. Um, and uh, we'll start taking samples and put that data up. There is a concern about odors. And we do believe that that odor is probably due in part to the spill. There is a large, large sheen. It is a very thin layer. And with uh, increasing wind and wave activity, you get an aerosol out there. And that moves. Now the question is, what does that mean? We don't have any reason to believe that there's a concern. But we can't answer that question until we get the data. That data uh, collection has already begun. And as we get data, we will put it up on the website. And we will interpret it because it's important to know what it really means. Water sampling begins today. We clearly know that there's a problem in the water, but it's in order to understand and help uh, understand uh, the fate and transport of material uh, that's already in the water. And that's on top of efforts by local governments and state governments and uh, NOAA who are already out in varying parts getting information. And it builds on an existing database of current ecological information that we have through our uh, Gulf of Mexico Research Center. So we're working to answer the questions that are beginning to be posed in people's mind. Now what I've said to people is, being from this area, it is not unusual for us to face an incident that we know is coming and to be prepared. And the resilience and strength of the people of the Gulf Coast has been what has gotten us through many, many, many a challenge. And one of the things I'm uh, determined to do while here is to make sure we are getting the best ideas from those who know these marshes and coastlines like the back of their hands to make sure that some of the high-tech solutions are met with low-tech or no-tech solutions that may be out there to try to do whatever we can to preserve people's culture, their way of life, and their livelihoods. Um, and we will continue to be here. I will stay. Uh, for uh, I'm planning right now two days. I'm already uh, thinking about calling my family and saying maybe it's going to need to be longer. But we will stay as long as we need to to make sure that we are uh, ready and able to be partners in response to support all the local governments who are out there who are trying to stand up their people and get their communities ready for this response. Thanks very much. Oh, and uh, now I'd like to introduce Doug Suttles from BP. Thank you, and I, I'm very pleased that you've all joined us here um, as we try to address this, uh, this very, very unfortunate event. Since this event began on April the 20th, uh, we've only had three priorities, and those priorities have been stop the flow of oil, minimize the impact, and keep the public informed. We've so far mounted the largest response effort ever done in the world. We've utilized every technology available. We've applied every resource requested. We continue to try to stop the source of flow. We continue to develop new options, both to address the continued flow of oil at the seabed, but also to minimize the impact to the environment. We welcome every new idea and every, every offer of support, both from state government and federal government. We had an idea submitted to us just 48 hours ago about the subsea application of dispersants. That operation will begin in less than two hours. As a demonstration of the application of new technology and openness to new thinking, we have invited in experts from other oil and gas companies, and as we speak, members of the Department of Defense are with our team in Houston looking for new ideas. So like everyone, we understand and completely agree that we need to bring this event to closure as quickly as possible, and we need to address the impacts as fully as we can in BP's resources will be made available to do that. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you identify your uh, media outlet? Right hand Ray Henry, I work for the Associated Press. Can anyone from the uh, Coast Guard or BP talk a little bit about the role, if any, they think um, cementing played in the explosion, uh, particularly uh, what happened in this process and whether that figures into the investigation? Well, this is Doug Suttles from BP. Um, we, we actually don't know what caused this event. Um, and, uh, and, and clearly the government has an investigation that they've initiated. We've launched our own internal investigation as well. But as you can imagine, since this event began, we've only had uh, one focus, which is stop the flow of oil 
and actually minimize the impact. Uh, through good time and as quickly as possible, we will actually find the cause. Uh, the equipment on the seabed, which we're all very interested, will eventually be recovered and hopefully we can discover and learn things from this event to make this event never occur again. Just uh, not on behalf of the Coast Guard, but on behalf of Secretary Napolitano and me, we have uh, signed uh, a memorandum of understanding to do a joint investigation uh, between uh, the Department of Interior and Homeland uh, Security. Those investigators uh, are on the ground. Uh, they're trying to determine uh, the facts, and uh, obviously this is going to be an investigation that will be unfolding. But at this point in time, uh, there are no clear answers as to what caused what is very apparently uh, an unprecedented event uh, that uh, uh, is, is, is being very difficult to deal with. This is Kasia Klimashinska from Bloomberg News. I was wondering if you have a new estimate of current costs, daily costs of these operations, and has the drilling of the so-called relief uh, well already started? Thank you. Our, uh, the, the current cost of these operations are between six and seven million dollars a day. Clearly, as the oil approaches the shoreline, those costs will increase as we mount uh, both additional booming activities and as we uh, we mount uh, cleanup activities where it has occurred. The uh, relief well operation will uh, should begin tomorrow. Uh, the drilling rig has arrived. It's on station. It's doing final preparations. I should also say that a second drill ship will be arriving tomorrow, and that drill ship will be available to deploy the subsea recovery system we've discussed, or attempt additional interventions on the existing uh, on the existing well. Yep. Uh, Go Governor General, uh, Alan Johnson for Agency France Press. Uh, a lot of people in uh, Venice, Louisiana, and Lower Plaquemines are very angry with BP and they're uh, considering uh, filing suit and want to know if the uh, state of Louisiana is con considering filing, uh, filing suit against BP also and how does that change the dynamic of your, lead of your uh, relationship with the company if, it, if you are considering filing suit? Sure, a couple of things. One, our focus right now obviously is to mitigate the damage on our coast, on our fisheries, and our wetlands, and our fragile ecosystems. And one of the suggestions we made, you heard me say this in my comments, is we are concerned and we have encouraged BP strongly to seek even more assistance from the federal government, because I do think this response could overwhelm their capabilities, especially as you see not only Louisiana, but other states coast that may be potentially impacted. So uh, right now our focus is making sure that we deploy the resources to protect our coastline and that this, the cleanup starts as quickly as possible. I know there'll be time later for folks to consider litigation, claims, financial reimbursement. Right now our focus has got to be on protecting our coast, our wetlands, our ecosystems. Obviously a lot of people's livelihoods that are going to be uh, negatively impacted Impacted. Our commercial fisheries, our, our recreational fishermen, many, many small businesses. And that's why we've already asked the Department of Commerce and the Small Business Administration to help those small businesses. We want to do everything we can to help our small businesses and our people get back on their feet. Sabrina Wilson, Fox 8 News in New Orleans. Um, you said you're calling on BP to operate smarter, to do more, at least two members uh, of the I'm sorry, Sabrina, you, who are you asking the question to? I, I, I'm addressing this to um, Secretary um, um, Salazar and Napolitano. You've called on BP to um, operate smarter, do more. Specifically, where do you think they're dropping the ball? 